You can unlock two exclusive emblems by watching and or subscribing to my live stream at twitch.tv slash during the times and dates on screen. I'll see you there. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, Will It Build? episode of Will It Build, where today we are build crafting around the new Warlock exotic armor piece coming with episode Revenant of Destiny 2, the Rhyme Coat Rhymant, or Raymond, however you pronounce it. First things first, how do you even get this thing in the first place? Similar to how I showed you guys how I got the brand new Hunter exotic, it's the same exact process. All you have to do is max out your Rahul rank and reset the vendor once by turning in Prime Ingrams, which will give you 100 rep apiece, or the most optimal way is by focusing exotic engrams on the precision decryption page. It's very expensive when it comes to glimmer and ascendant shards, but if you have enough resources, you're able to use this to get 500 rep per exotic engram, which will max out your rank pretty much immediately. If you are short of ascendant shards and exotic engrams, you can either spam the daily legend law sector. If you want to see what the daily legend law sector is for a particular day, you can look in the daily legend law sector channel in my discord server linked in the description to know where to go. Or alternatively, if you played last Last episode but did not claim all of your rewards from the season pass you can actually grab those rewards and use them to upgrade Rahul right now all you have to do is go to bungie.net sign into your profile and then click on the little circle icon up here at the top click on season pass progress and then once this page loads you're going to go ahead on the top left you'll see previous season this will allow you to claim all of your previously unclaimed items from last episode so if you have a bunch of exotic engrams left over and and ascendant shards left over, you'll be able to claim them and then you'll be able to use those to focus at Rahul and get to your maximum rank. Then once you reset Rahul's rank, you'll then have access to the final page of his focusing novel decryption, where you'll be able to grab exotic armor pieces that you do not yet own, such as the rhyme coat in exchange for one exotic cipher and one exotic engram. You can either get the cipher from your previous season pass or you get a cipher every time you rank him up. The build itself, you'll notice probably the first thing you see is that I'm on stasis right now, which you might think, Mac, isn't the best version of this build basically just going to be the prismatic warlock setup where you were using getaway artist, you got devour and bleak watcher, except instead of getaway artist, you just throw on rhyme coat? Probably. Yes, but I have an idea for a stasis variant of this build that whilst it might not be as potent, it's going to be a more unique way to play than what you were used to last episode. And I think it has a lot of merits to it. And I think it's going to be extremely fun and still extremely powerful. First things first, let's look at the exotic armor piece itself, Rhyme Coat. We've got Bleak Domain, where your Bleak Watcher turrets are enhanced with extended range and are surrounded by stasis crystals and a storm, specifically four stasis crystals, and they continuously respawn even after being destroyed. That'll be important when we get to our fragments. While standing in the storm, you are granted icicles over time. Icicles activate when you fire your weapons, applying slow to targets they hit. If we go ahead and look at our subclass, obviously when it comes to Stasis Warlock, we only have one option for our super and our melee. You can honestly go Healing Rift or Empowering Rift. It's up to you. I think Empowering Rift is probably going to be a better play here because you're going to have so much survivability with everything being frozen from the Stasis turrets. Maybe in higher end content, you could justify healing rift, but I think it's dealer's choice here. We're then, of course, going with the cold snap grenade. I think it's the best grenade on Warlock. You don't really need to worry about going the moment the lowest base cooldown because using Bleak Watcher hard locks your grenade cooldown to the highest tier of two minutes and one second. So we're going to go with cold snap grenade. Obviously, most of the time we're going to be using this to throw out a turret, so we're not even really going to be using the grenade itself. But in situations where we do want to use the grenade itself, I do think cold snap is the best option for Warlock. In terms of aspects, we're obviously going with Bleak Watcher. This build would not work whatsoever without it. And then we're pairing it up with Ice Flare Bolts. We're shattering a frozen target, spawns seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. So you'll have a domino effect, a cascading chain of everything getting frozen. Your turret goes and shoots something, freezes it. You kill that enemy. Another seeker 
goes and freezes another enemy so that your turret can focus on a different third enemy. Everything is going to be frozen with these two aspects. For our first fragment, we're going with the Whisper of Fissures, where the damage and size of the AoE burst when you destroy a stasis crystal or a frozen target is bigger, obviously, because we're going to be having a ton of crystals around our turret in conjunction with all the frozen enemies that we're going to be killing. We're then going with the Whisper of Durance so that the slow debuff is going to be longer when it's applied to enemies. And the main important part of this for abilities that linger, their duration will increase. This means our turrets will be on the field a little bit longer, which is obviously very, very nice since they're the center core part of our build. And next up, we got the Whisper of Shards. We're shattering a stasis crystal is going to boost our grenade recharge rate. This is going to enable us to continuously have our grenade available so we can continuously spam Bleak Watcher turrets. This is going to have us where we get into a situation where we can even have like two, three, maybe four Bleak Watcher turrets up at the same time. Finally, we're going with the Whisper of Refraction. We're defeating slowed or frozen targets, which is literally going to be every single target that we defeat with this build is going to give us class ability energy. While our class ability in and of itself isn't super, super powerful, we're going to kind of build craft around it with some mods to give it a little bit more potency and give it some additional effects that are going to aid us further in this build. The Stasis Super is notoriously not very good on Warlock, so we're going to circumvent that a little bit by instead of actually using the Stasis Super, we're going to go with Aggro Scepter for our kinetic weapon slot because Aggro Scepter is, of course, going to allow us to hold R, do the uh, special reload whenever our super is full to basically empower this weapon to do heavy weapon levels of damage. Very, very powerful weapon. Feels very good, especially with the final blows of this weapon generate a slowing burst. That's going to play into our Whisper of Refraction so that we get even more slowed target defeats, get even more class ability energy, and we can cast that even more often. As far as the rest of our weapons go, two variants of this build I'm thinking. We've got like the hunker down, like mortar strike version of this build where you're playing from very, very far away and the close range in the middle of the fight controlling the flow of battle version. I'm going to show you both in this video. The first one I'm going to show is the mortar strike hunker down. You're kind of like a stationary fortress, if that makes sense. I love the idea of bringing a weapon with shoot to loot and explosive payload, because the idea I have for this is we're going to play very, very far away and kind of because our stasis turrets have increased range. So we're going to play far away, set up our little bunker. We're going to shoot the stasis crystals to get increased grenade regeneration so we can continuously set up our bunker. And then any enemies we kill from far away, any enemies that we kill that we make orbs from and that we generate special ammo from, we can just use shoot to loot to pick up the orbs to get fill up our super meter and use shoot to loot to get the special bricks so that we can fuel our aggers that is also going to be fueled by our super meter. Explosive payload, just a generally good perk, also going to make it easier to pick up those things with shoot to loot since the explosion will also count for picking them up. And then finally, for your heavy weapons, really whatever you want, I like the idea of matching the element of my heavy weapon to aggers so that we can go with something like a stasis scavenger so that we'll get bonus ammo on both our heavy brick and special ammo brick pickups. And in terms of our mods, for the far away version of this build that we're going with, we're going to go with a siphon for both our aggers as well as our energy weapon, and we're going to go with a special ammo finder for more aggers ammo. On the gloves, we're going to go with grenade kickstart so that we can have increased grenade cooldown so we can throw even more turrets and have multiple turrets up at the same time. In conjunction with that, I like going with a harmonic loader so that our heavy ammo weapon, our machine gun, as well as our aggers can be reloaded a little bit more quickly, as well as bolstering detonation so that we can get bonus class ability energy whenever we cause damage with a grenade. This counts, by the way, if your Bleak Watcher shoots something that counts as grenade damage and will proc bolstering detonation. On the chest, we're simply going with a concussive dampener for some damage resistance and charge up so we can have four armor charge stacks instead of three, which is going to be important because we're going to be rolling with these stacks on stacks mods so that any time we pick up an orb or get an orb by hitting it with shoot to loot, we get two stacks of armor charge that's going to fuel our grenade kickstart. So we're always throwing out a turret with four stacks and get a ton of grenade energy back, as well as an innervation so we get grenade cooldown whenever we pick up an orb of power. And then, of course, like I said, the harmonic scavenger. And finally, on the class item, we're going with the reaper. So every time we cast our class ability, which will be very, very frequent, we're going to get an orb of power generation whenever we defeat an enemy with a weapon, plus two copies of bomber. So that anytime we cast our class ability, we get bonus grenade energy. We can spew out more turrets. I'm going to show you the first play style I have of this, where we're going to be playing from further away, further range, but we're going to have a slightly different mod setup and slightly different weapon setup when I show you the alternate play style for this build. The first play style for this build we're going to have is going to be really, really potent higher end content, things like Onslaught, things like Grandmaster Nightfalls. So without further ado, we're going to check this bad boy out, see how it goes and answer that question. Will it build? So here's the idea. We're gonna throw our turret down, chuck it right there. We're gonna immediately kill one of the crystals that pops up to proc our shards so that we're getting increased grenade ability regeneration. You can actually do two to be honest, because you get five seconds apiece and it caps out at 10 seconds. 
And then we're basically just like hanging out on our bunker, continuously popping a crystal every, you know, five seconds, every 10 seconds to get our grenade regeneration. Chucking up a new turret whenever a grenade's available. Chucking up our rift anytime it's available. And uh, yeah, everything just kind of is automatically frozen immediately. And as you can see, the turrets like shoot from very, very, very far away. And uh, yeah, this is kind of the, uh, this is the bunker mode where we're just kind of hanging out in the back. We're a mortar turret. I see that orb of power so I can shoot it with shoot to loot. And then now that we have our super charged up, we can go to our aggers, hit the alternate reload real fast, maybe get down a empowering rift as well for the damage bonus. And basically just spray away at people. You can kind of use the uh, shards for cover as well. So you kind of have these like significantly less tanky titan barricades almost. And the aggers beam lasts for a very, very long time also. And then we go ahead and swap back to our scout rifle, get all of our shoot to loot orbs so we can get our super back. We can shoot our green bricks from this position. I mean, you honestly don't even have to use WASD on your keyboard to play this. If you're someone like me, where I'm gonna try and get a good camera shot on this. I actually, uh, I play with an MMO mouse. So I have 12 buttons on the side of the mouse. I actually have all of my abilities bound to my mouse. So I don't even really need, this is like the one handed build. Don't get your mind out of the gutter. I already know what some of you are thinking. This is basically the one handed build where like you don't even, you know, if, if you're trying to eat dinner or something, you got a snack, you're trying to text a friend or something like that. Your gameplay loop doesn't change at all. You can use your other hand to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You could use it to uh, come by to twitch.tv slash during, uh, you know, really any time or specifically from October 11th to October 13th, this Friday to Sunday, where we're going to be doing carries for the contest mode dungeon, helping people get through to get the guaranteed exotic drop, helping people get the contest mode clear for the exclusive emblem. Really, you know, the World, world's your oyster. And one of the things I really, really love about this build is it's very, very easy to use. Similar to the Hunter one that we just talked about, how it had certain variants that made it so that it was pretty much impossible to screw up the ability loops. Some builds are kind of particular when it comes to making sure that you're doing like the abilities in the correct order. And if you mess up your ability rotations or your ability combos, then your energy regenerations are in a situation where it's like you're kind of out of your build gameplay loop for a little bit until you can get things fixed. It's kind of impossible to mess this up. You don't really have to do much thinking while you're using this build. You don't really have to execute it perfectly. You're still going to be perfectly fine no matter what you do. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that's required for this build to effectively work is to have your grenade up. And considering that every single turret you throw lasts for like 30 seconds and spawns four crystals, which it's, it spawns, I mean, it spawns the crystals like every 10 seconds, it seems. And destroying those crystals is enough to get the grenade back. Like that's all you need for the core gameplay loop. Everything else is a cherry on top. So it's, it's really, really simple. And then we're going to get another little station going on up here. Shoot one of the crystals to get the grenade regeneration. One downside is when you're playing up a little bit close, especially if you're doing the empowering rift variant, it is going to be a little bit more dangerous. But we have a solution for that. And I think this is a good time to transition into version two of this build for those of you that like to be a little bit more up close in the action. Step one is instead of going with a long range energy weapon like the scout rifle, we're going to go with something a little more close range like a submachine gun or a hand cannon. Next up, we're going to make some tweaks to our mods. Instead of running special ammo finder, we're instead going to swap over to dynamo because we're gonna be significantly closer to enemies. Casting our class ability is gonna give us a lot more super energy. We can get our aggers super power beam active much more often with all the super energy that we're gonna be having. Next up is we're going to sacrifice one of our bombers for powerful attraction to make up for the fact that we no longer have shoot to loot. This is gonna make it still super, super easy to go ahead and collect all the orbs. Finally, we're gonna come up on here and change our empowering rift into a healing rift so we have a little bit of bonus survivability. Those are the only changes that we really need to make. And with those changes, you can now run a significantly more aggressive and advanced spawn trappy version of this build. Because now what I can do is I can run into like the spawn area of enemies as long as I'm making sure that I'm killing all the uh, stasis crystals to get my grenade energy back up. And then anytime we make an orb, throw down the healing rift, that's going to give us our survivability so that we're, you know, we're making sure we're not going to die. Constantly getting HP regeneration in this rift. And then anytime we cast a rift as well, 
We're gonna go ahead and get powerful attraction to proc so that we get all of those orbs, scoop them up, similar to how we were doing with shoot to loot previously. Throw that down, scoop them all up. Now that our super meter is full, we can go ahead and hit the switch on our aggers. And this is a much more kind of aggressive version of this build where you're playing a lot more offensively as opposed to playing kind of like the mortar strike long range bunker style. Another nice thing too, is that when you're playing this far up, Oh, let me back up a little bit. Really got to get that healing rift down. When you're playing this far up, the crystals that are spawning that you're blowing up to proc your shards, uh, those crystals are going to be dealing significantly more damage to enemies. Rather, they're going to be dealing damage to enemies, period, because you're actually in range of the blast of the crystals instead of uh, you're getting a lot more mileage of the whisper of out of the whisper of fissures by doing something like this because now instead of just getting the explosion damage from frozen targets you're now getting the explosion damage onto enemies from the crystals themselves as well as such when you're up here you kind of want to focus on using crystals behind you for whisper of shards procs to get your grenade energy back reserving the crystals in front of you for when enemies get close to them so that you can use them for damage and so you can use them for cover as well and by no means are you invincible in this configuration of the build you're definitely going to have to be a lot more careful with this play style and things like grandmaster nightfalls However, in Grandmaster Nightfalls, I think the more long-range version of this build is better suited for an activity like that anyway. Oh, I was hoping that guy was going to get frozen before he got his shield up. Should be able to take him out, though, before he can get his next shield up. Because we do have a lot of damage going on, especially with those icicles. Our bullets are slowing while we're standing in that storm as well. So we're applying slow stacks with every single bullet that we put on them. We got something like a machine gun that's firing out a lot of bullets. Something like a submachine gun that's firing a lot of bullets. Can freeze targets very easily, especially those tanky high priority targets like champions. As I said before, I'm sure the knee-jerk reaction is probably going to be for most people to go ahead and rock and roll with the prismatic warlock. And do the prismatic warlock setup that they were typically doing for getaway artists, but just taking off getaway artists and throwing on rhyme coat i think that could absolutely work i'm sure that would be a very powerful and very potent build when it came to build crafting this i wanted to try and come up with something that had a different style to it and a different gameplay loop something that no other build quite does even if that's not as strong or as potent as effective as maybe some of the other options that you could have had with this exotic armor piece i didn't really want to talk about a build for 20 or 25 minutes that was basically summarized by hey take this build that you already have sub out one exotic armor piece and then you're good to go and now we have a subjugator up so we'll get our turret down healing rift so we can bunker two crystals to start our regeneration and then we'll get our aggers beam on with our super yep he's dead <laughs> So those are the two different variants or playstyles that I've crafted up for the stasis specific build for the new Warlock Exotic Rhyme Coat Rhymant, Raymond, however you pronounce it, like I said. If you're looking for a build for the new Hunter Exotic, the Mask of Fealty, I did a video on that yesterday. You can click on the channel and check that out. I'll also link it in the description. And if you're looking for a video for a build for the new Titan Exotic Armor piece, the Blast Wave Striders, we will make sure we get that made and released tomorrow. Outside of those three exotics, if you have any exotics that you have an idea for a build for, please be sure to submit your build in my Will It Build channel in my Discord server so we can check it out and feature it in one of these videos. Hope to see you guys on the live stream, twitch.tv slash Mactics, where we film all these live. Hope to see you for the dungeon race, where you can earn two exclusive emblems, a third if you're going to be entering into the raffles to get a carry for contest mode. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to catch the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.